Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel, best friend, best friend Johnny. And um, in this video, what I'm going to discuss is on how to draw shear and moment diagrams uh, of a beam uh, loaded with a uniformly varying load or commonly termed uh, triangular load. Okay. And I hope that this presentation can help many students uh, understand this topic. Okay. Right. Let us solve a simple problem. Compute the shear force, uh, construct the shear force and the bending moment diagrams for the beam shown by the area. Okay. Uh, let us start our analysis by considering the common mistakes of many students okay, uh, in analyzing this type of load. Okay, so of course, uh, in beam analysis, you start with the reaction. And if you have a triangular load or for this one, trapezoidal load, you have to subdivide this one. You have to subdivide the load because we don't have already formula on the location of the centroid of a trapezoid. Okay. It's subdivided into a rectangle and a triangle. And then after this, you compute the resultant of each part. The resultant of a rectangle 6 by 10 and then resultant of the triangle 30 long. That's 40 minus 10. And the resultants are located or are acting at its center. So for a rectangle, it's at the, it's at the geometric center. And for a triangle, uh, two thirds to A, one third to B, one third to B. C. So you have this resultant force is 60 for the rectangular part and the 90 for the triangular part. And so we now compute for the reaction. We start with RB, we sum up moment at A. And uh, assumption is counterclockwise positive. And we have RB equal to 90. And the next is we have RA just sum of force along the vertical and have ra equal to 60. Uh, so with this uh, we are now ready to draw the diagrams okay so for shear uh, you start at a now upward force in 60 so you go up and then that's 60 and then from E to B, the area is 150, that's 60 plus 90. 150 downward, so that's negative. So from 60 minus 150, you'll have negative 90 at B. And the curvature is this, um, supposed to be, and this is my technique by the way. Uh, oh, the curvature, which is a second degree curve, is pasoluja. And that's concave upward, but since the load is downward, uh, ang curve should be concave, concave downward. Instead of concave upward, but the negative man, then a mirror nimo, and you will have this. And you have negative 90, that's 60 minus 150, negative 90. And then you have an upward reaction of 90. Then your shear diagram is closed. Okay. okay, so this is a second degree curve. Oh, yes, as I have explained in uh, first video now, the shear and moment. Now by integration, we increase um, um, powers of variable. So first degree, second degree, and it's a moment, it's a third degree curve. So 
we're not ready to solve for x because our main objective here is to get the maximum moment eh? and then check nato if we are correct we solve for the area but we need a value of x so let's draw this line where she is zero ah, okay we will solve for x using squared property of parabola not ratio and proportion okay for straight line and squared property so when you use the squared property parabola you need the vertex because that is your reference now this is where your problem start because you thought that this is the vertex okay. oh this is your understanding this is the vertex and this is where uh you refer in using the squared property of the parabola so let's assign a variable x um, so vertical is the horizontal squared and then vertical that's 150 60 plus 90 is to 6 squared and you can solve for x it's 3.7947 now Okay. So we are now ready to solve for the area. So E1. And this is your second problem because you thought that this area is a parabolic segment. Okay. And from parabolic segment, you can use the formula two thirds BH. And so you use the formula two-thirds VH, and you had this value, 151.789. So I plot nemo. Since concave downward on second degree, on third degree, concave downward. You have 151. Oh, it's a third degree curve. And then after this, you compute for area two. Problem number three. You again thought, um, because again, you thought that this is a parabolic spandrel and that you can use the formula one third BH. And so, and you have this value one third six minus X negative 66. So, from 151, you add area to oh, and 85.63 there is a gap okay there is a gap and this is simply wrong because this is expected that the moment that b should be equal to zero so what will you do you will draw a line but para ma closer no but obviously this is wrong because you can only draw a line if there is a reaction moment or a load na moment. Pwede na. Pero without those reactions and load na moment, you cannot draw a vertical line sa moment. So for sure, this analysis is wrong. Okay? So let's proceed to the correct analysis. Similar lang, similar procedure, subdivide, and then get the resultant, uh, solve for RB, and then you solve for RA, and then draw, okay. Should diagram upward, 60, and then you go down, negative 90, and then Similar to the first one. I close up, huh? and this is second degree. Okay. So let's solve for x, okay? Because our target is this one, area one. Now, since we're going to use the squared property, let's locate the vertex. So where is really the vertex? Okay. First, you have to locate the point where the value of the load is zero. 
So you have to extend the load until it will it will intersect the horizontal line. Okay. So you have to locate this point. And we'll assign a variable D. We can solve for D by ratio and proportion straight line. Man. Okay. So vertical is the horizontal. So it's 10 over D, 40 over 6 plus D. And D equals 2. So, uh, okay. After this, uh, you draw a vertical line, projects over us. Okay. And you extend this curve up to this point, this this line, and then the point of intersection is the vertex. So it means that the vertex of the parabola coincides with the point where the load is zero. So since there is zero on load, now the young vertex. Okay. So in the computation of area, there is more reference, not on this point. Okay. So before we can solve for x, since we are going to use the squared property of the parabola, there is So y is to x. And it's a two, right? but we still don't have the value from 60 to the vertex, the vertical distance there. So let us solve that first. Okay, anyway, this is the vertex. So we are going to solve for this one. We'll denote it as y. Okay. So we will solve for y using squared property. So this one, y is two, two squared, uh, this one, 150 plus y, that's 90 plus 60, 150 plus y is to 8 squared. You have this, y equals 10. Okay. So after y, pwede nang x. You cannot solve for x, again, using squared property. Okay. So, when you solve for x, uh, you'll be using two points. Either this one, y is to x squared, or y is to x squared. Or this one, first point, second point. So, this is 70. 60 plus 10. Okay. So, okay. So, it's 70 over x plus 2 squared 160 that's 90 plus 70 160 is to 8 squared and you have x equal to 3.2915 okay this one okay now let us solve for the areas of the issue diagram for area one, okay. our, mistake, our mistake before is that we thought that this is a parabolic segment, but it is not. Because uh, the requirement in using two-thirds VH is that one of the vertices of the closed figure must be the vertex of the parabola. And in this case, wala ang vertex. You cannot find the vertex out of the three vertices. So therefore, you cannot use two thirds VH. So this is how you're going to solve for area one. Let's draw some lines. Okay. Okay. Consider this one, a bigger parabolic segment. Parabolic segment now, because of the three vertices, one, two, and three, one of them is the vertex of the parabola. Okay, so a bigger parabolic segment, a smaller parabolic segment, a rectangle, and then area one. So to compute for area one, you get the area of this one, the bigger parabolic segment, you subtract the area of this, smaller parabolic segment, and you subtract the area of the rectangle, and that's A1. Okay. Uh, and the value is 113.6033. Uh, okay. 
and then you cannot draw the curve or the moment diagram. So maximum moment is 113.603. This is a third degree curve again. And then we'll compute for area two. So, now, area two, our mistake, so first solution is we thought that this is a parabolic spandle, but again, it's not because of the three vertices, none of them is the vertex of the parab parabola. So we cannot use one third BH now formula. So how are we going to solve for E sub two? I consider this one. Okay. You have a bigger parabolic spandrel, then a smaller parabolic spandrel and a rectangle. So, ah, nice. Bigger parabolic spandrel minus smaller parabolic spandrel minus this rectangle and this area too. So to compute for it though, here it is. Bigger spandrel minus smaller spandrel minus rectangle and you have 113.6033. So this one minus this one, zero. Therefore, we are correct. So this is how to uh, you are going to analyze a problem on beams loaded with uniformly varying load. So first you have to locate the point where the load is zero because that will be at the location of the vertex of the parabola. So uh, always remember that one. And when you, when you compute for areas, always refer it from the vertex. Ah, okay. So this is the solution when you use the area moment method, uh, area, sorry, area method. Uh, but my uh, suggestion or my advice that if ever you encounter such problem as this, it's better to use method of sections. So the moment na mag zero ang shear projects a load cut a section shear in the moment distance of x analyze the left side sum up force uh, vertical then equate shear to zero you can solve for x and then sum up moment and you can solve for x much easier but Dependence. Uh, it depends on the student. Uh, if you don't like method of sections, then you can use area method or vice versa. Okay. So I hope that if you have encountered this type of problem and you find it difficult, I hope na um, na clear na yung doubt signing presentation uh, thank you for watching <laughs>